Hi, Haley. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, listen, I just realized, hi, Sarah. I can't find my blurb that I'm supposed to say about the beginning of the meeting. Uh, um, I don't know where it went, but it disappeared from my folder. Let me see if I can comb through my email. Uh, I was trying to do that because I know you sent it to me at one point, but I... I couldn't, I haven't been successful finding it. I'm trying to think of what it was called. Hi, Mark. This is unmuted. You're unmuted. I'm unmuted. Now you are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Jean, just to let you, oh, Jean and ha Haley, mm -hmm. just to let you know, I sent both of you an email like a couple minutes ago. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. It's from mm -hmm. the Amherst Neighbors. So I thought I'd send it, it has to do with dementia. So I thought I'd send it over. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to look something up for Jean. No, that's fine. I just wanted to let you know when you get a sec. Take a look at it later. When you have no time. I mean, when you have time. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'll have plenty of time. Yeah. I do know why it's not in my folder, Haley, because our last meeting, I was at my granddaughter's house. So I, in my excitement to wrap things up, I did not. Did I first send it to you in an email? I thought so because <clears throat> I've gone through your emails and I has not I might have forwarded it to you from Angela okay
I like the background, Mark. I was just playing with it. That's what. <laughs> yes, I noticed that you were in the forest and then you, or the jungle, and now you're out of space. I didn't realize that you could do that. This is wonderful. I have to. I have to find something for for the next meeting that works better. There, I'm back. Blended. Hi, Christina. Can you hear me? Yeah, so that was a little staticky, but. And Jack, yeah, I can log off. Hello, yeah, I can log. I can log off and and log in with a different. Uh, well, actually, you sound fine now. Fun. You're you're oh. sounding nice and clear now, so I think we're good. I think we are one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> I do believe we need one more member to be at quorum. Um, Chad is in the audience. Chad, I'm clicking promote to panelists, and you have to agree to that in order to join as a panelist. I don't know, Jean. I'm not finding that. I can't find it in okay. my email. Um, and I tried Googling the text, but okay, not the easiest thing to to search for. Yeah, I'm sure not. Okay, excellent. Chad is with us. Hi, Chad. All right. Um, you think we'll be okay if I... Um, I think if you can add Libet and then we can maybe just make an amendment at maybe next time just to clarify, but do you remember enough that you could add Lib? Um, I'll do my best. Okay, let's roll with that. <laughs> All right. Welcome everyone to the Council on Aging meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, and the decree by Governor Baker. Um, and I don't remember the Massachusetts general law chapter 18 section. Um, allows us to conduct the meeting via Zoom. Um, and that's exactly what we will do. So want to take roll call, Mark? Sorry, you... here. Thank you. Sarah? Here. Christina? Here. Jacqueline? Here. <clears throat> Chad? Yes. I believe, I don't believe Terry and Dawn and Dennis are both sick. So, okay. All right. Public comment. Do we have any members of the public? We do have an attendee. If they would like to make a comment, they just have to raise their hand.
And since I can't see them, I'm assuming there hasn't been one. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the director's update. Yes. Um, so been a busy couple months. Um, one major update is that our civil sh silver shuttle van has some electrical malfunction. So we were scheduled to go to the Mead Art Museum in early November um, and go out to lunch. And we couldn't get the car out of the DPW driveway and ended up having to be towed to a parking space at DPW. And we we're not able to even get it into the repair shop until December 8th. So it'll be a little while before it's back and operational. Um, we are doing our best to, um, you know, deliver on rides that were already booked. So Rob is using the minivan and for people who needed the lift, um, you know, we're referring them to the PBTA paratransit because we just don't have the capacity to accommodate that right now. Mm -hmm. it, uh, the consensus from DPW is that it should be fairly easy to fix. It seems like there's an indicator that's malfunctioning. So it's telling the van something that's not true. And then because of that, we can't operate it. So I'm hopeful that once we get it in, it won't take very long to make the necessary repairs. Um, up until that happened, um, we've done over 100 rides um, just in this year, year to date. Um, which is pretty fantastic. I'm really happy about that. It's definitely taken off. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that in working with PBTA, we'll be able to expand the number of days that we are doing rides, possibly the hours or um, geographic radius, but at least if we could get five days a week service, um, you know, if we're doing a hundred already at this point with just three days, imagine what those extra two days would bring in in terms of number of rides. Um, that's been one of the main things, you know, we are, I've made a, an offer to someone to be the new activities coordinator for the senior center. So I'm hoping that we can get them in by next week and um, start training them, start having them take over some of the activity schedule and coordinating, which does take a lot of fine detailing. Um, as you all know, Helen's last day will be the 29th of December. We are planning um, a little something for her that I don't want to share in Zoom, but if you want to know, just call the center and we'll tell you. Um, she's been with the center for, I think, over 10 years um, and definitely contributed a lot of knowledge and expertise. Um, that candidate search has not been particularly fruitful. There was one person that I thought was going to work out, but it turns out they're not moving to the area, so they can't take the job. Um, so I have asked the HR department to push it out again and kind of broaden the range. We're going to try to target some of the universities that have social work programs and um, we're pushing it out through the MCOA network. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more traction there and then we'll just be working with Helen to kind of triage, you know, case management as best we can at the center. But it's likely that for some of the more nuanced things, we might end up referring out to Highland Valley. Um, so it shouldn't mean that people won't get services. It just might mean that we're having to collaborate more and bring in another um, another people. It is the start of the FY25 budget season. Um, you know, my, my if there's one thing I can ask of this group, it's to be vocal with your town counselors, go to meetings, talk about how the senior center needs more funding. Um, you know, I am putting in a what will likely be a substantial request for this department. I think if, if you look at the last 10 years, the increases have been very modest, um, but we've seen a lot of growth and certainly I want to position us in a place where we can build. Um, so looking at perhaps adding some new staff, increasing our operating expense budget. Um, it's always a tight budget year. So, you know, if we can get out and start clamoring for, for more support, I think that would be tremendous. Um, I've read the recaps of some of the town council meetings and it seems like other groups are going and saying that, you know, we need funding for X, Y, and Z not related to the senior center. So it would be good if we were at the forefront of that. Um, what else can I say? Those are the big ones. Um, you know, we, we continue to have some behavioral issues. There was a gentleman who came into the center today and was screaming profanities at um, our admin assistant to the point where she had to ask him to leave. It was that bad. Um, that person I, I will be talking to when they come back and telling him that, you know, you just can't come to the center anymore. 
you can't use that language and you can't treat people like that. Um, and, you know, that's never something I look forward to, but, you know, we definitely want to make it a place where people feel comfortable at. And if that's not happening, we need to make it happen. Um, but other than that, you know, the team's been working really solid. Um, it's been so wonderful to have Highland Valley come in and oversee operations of the meal program. Um, it's taken a lot of pressure off of all of us. Um, it's allowed Julia to kind of plan some, some winter fest activities, um, coordinate more with student groups. Um, so we're, I'm really happy about that. We'll definitely be picking up steam a little bit and, um, you know, just kind of working with some more collaborations, trying to get uh, different programming to target different populations. I'm working right now with um, Bill Laramie at the police department to maybe take a, a field trip to a UMass basketball game. And that would be intergenerational. And I think just really a fun way. Um, someone was at the cafe playing with Augie, the dog, um, and had mentioned how much when he lived in Chicago, he really loved basketball and he misses going to games. So be a nice thing to do for people. And definitely if we can make it intergenerational and, and start the collaborating that way, I'd be happy. So yeah, the big things are the van not being in use, good synergy on the team. And definitely if we can be plugging that there's a need to expand the budget. Um, I ran the numbers and for the last decade, we've averaged 0.28% of the town's budget. I'd like to see that increase a little bit. Um, or at least keep pace with growth in other areas. I have to say, um, I just find that number stunning. It is stunning mm -hmm. and it still is, but I did see that we're we're not the only department that has such a sliver, but it is still a worrying trend. You know, I, I don't wanna misrepresent things and say that it's only us. There are a couple others who share that umbrella, but nevertheless, it's. I think we need to be hitting at least point three. If we can get to point three, I'd be happy. What number is that? Uh, we currently represent 0.28 of the total town budget. And that has been consistent for the last decade. If you go back to 2013, um, you know, varies a little bit, but overall that was the average. Not even a percent. Actually, no, and actually there's, so I actually, and then, you know, little, little MBA student that I am, I went through and compared it to other departments. There's not many that crack the point one, the, the one percent mark, but there are a great deal that get much closer to that one percent. Um, you know, and there's some things we'll never compete with, like DPW, they're always going to have the lion's share because it's very costly to run those departments. Um, but the, I don't think that should mean that we can't get a little bit more than we're getting now. Well, especially the other thing that surprised me when you were um, telling me about the budget is that you don't, basically your, your budget is covering staff salaries. You don't have um, yeah. operating. I should have brought, I should have uploaded my spreadsheet to the cloud and I'll do that next time. But if you look at our our overall budget, 99% of the budget goes to staff salary. And that's not even all staff because we do have one employee that's paid through formula funds that we get through the state. And then the other 1% is the office supplies. And then, so if you look at the total senior center pie as we have to generate um, almost 200, don't quote me on this because I don't have my spreadsheet but almost 200,000 in supplemental like grants and donations, you know, um, or in-kind salary, like we get through the senior employment program. I, I compared the budget. And so the town pays about maybe like 65% of our budget, but we have to add in that extra 35% um, for grants and donations and things like that. So we really do augment a, a sizable chunk of the the budget with our own means. And, and that also means is some pressure to secure those grants and to yes. raise those funds. Especially if you, um, if Dennis was here, I would ask him to jump in as a friends member or, or Mark, you can also speak to this. Donations are way down for the friends. Um, so we are definitely um, 
you know, it's a time to pull ourselves up and tighten the budget a little bit, but I am hopeful we have a lot of good fundraisers on the horizon. So that'll help mitigate some of the losses that we've seen thus far, but yeah, financially, um, a little work there needs to be done and Chad had, has had his hand up. Yep, Chad. Yeah, we talk about elevator speech and, and supporting the center. I have none of that information. If there's some kind of way, um, you know, all I know about is the $12 per citizen that comes in February. Um, it's actually gone up to $14. So the right. mass formula fund has gone up, So which is really nice. And we have more seniors. But um, still, but it's such a small part of the whole thing. Um, you know, I have no idea. Some of the numbers that you just peeled off went by me pretty quick. Is there a say, way that we can get a little sheet that says some of this information? Yeah. Yeah. I would just yeah. say, let me know the numbers <clears throat> you need. I, I can pull them. I've been, I actually have a five sheet spreadsheet with a whole <laughs> slew of budget analysis. I'm happy to share, but if, but if I don't know what information you're all looking for, I can't provide it. But you also put something together before Haley, cause you, um, you had a meeting with some folks and then For um, finance. Well, talking about like an elevator pitch of five minute um, or two minute or yes, many minutes. But if you, but I haven't, um, you know, this is the first year where I really had an opportunity to go and, and felt like I had the knowledge and the skills from having now taking an accounting class to really look at and examine thoroughly the budgeting process. So I have a lot more information than I have had in years past. Mm -hmm. And I, um, you know, and I, I'm happy to share that. I, yeah, yeah I've, I've got the pie charts and I've got everything, but, and we did an elevator speech thing. And I think, you know, making sure that people know, you know, 5,500 older adults, about 15% of the town's population, year round population um, is even bigger. If it's 15% with the students, once the students leave, it's more like 30%, 60 and older. Um, you know, those are really a significant number, a significant voting block in the town. Um, what are some other really good ones to know? So you did put this on paper. So I think we need to dig it out yeah. and send it yeah. to everybody because it was a combination yeah. of how to frame your comments, you know, kind of be savvy and um, be an effective lobbyist, if you will, or marketer. I don't know, whatever word you want to use there. Marketing um, sounds better. Marketing. Okay. Marketing center, as well as some, some numbers <laughs> and percentages. So I think um, I just made a note. We'll, we'll dig that out and send it out to everybody. Cause yeah. Um, well, for me, my question was specifically about dollars. Yeah. I've got all that other stuff. I don't have, I, I mentioned, I don't have anything on, you know, for instance, today she said, what was it? Less than 1% of the budget goes it's to the senior point, center. 0.28%. <laughs> so that's brand new to me. Uh, I don't know, you know, how many dollars that is, how it's split. I mean, we should, I, Sean O'Malley or whatever his name is, can split the, the, the numbers any way he wants. We, for instance, he doesn't have to put in the amount of electricity and heating and all that kind of stuff that the senior center uses because it's only, what, four rooms or whatever. I mean, there's all ways you can do it, but something that is a beginning place on, I guess you would call it budget. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say I got all that information from the town budget that it puts out. I literally just went through the town budget. All our information is up there, how much the salary is, how much the operating expenses are. And I just took the total of the town budget and what they gave to us, you know, what, what we had appropriated. And then I just did simple division. Um, and that's what I based my calculations on. If there are specific figures that you are looking for, like um, a dollar amount per senior, say, or, yeah. you know, percentage trends, you know, I've done a year to date analysis, I've done year to year. So if there's something specific that you're looking for, um, I just don't want to dump information on people if it's not going to be particularly helpful to them. So if I have some kind of frame of reference, I can generate a report. 
So well, can we leave maybe, it that if folks have particular questions, they can just email? Yeah, and I'll do that. I, I really want to have that done for the next meeting because that that's going to be right in the thick of budget season and and um and we all we all want to have that info or i'll maybe send it out sooner if i can get it done okay i, I would be i'm trying to figure out i can't get okay i wanted to raise my hand um and i would be interested in knowing um how much income to the town is generated by the presence of the elders. What kind of funding do they get? What kind of funding are the, I don't know if I could tell you the income generated, but I could definitely tell you how much funding is given to the senior center and give you even no, a number that's no, per senior. No, no. How much, uh, how much is, is generated to the town as a result of the presence of the number of seniors who are here. How would so, you uh, measure that? Are you saying like taxes? Sure. Taxes and okay. there may be state, um, either local taxes mm -hmm. and the state budget, how much is allocated um, for the population. Okay. Yeah, I can get you the formula fund number. That's the like the grant that we get from the state based on the number of older adults who live in Amherst. Um, and I can ask the assessor if she has any tax information. Um, and I'll, I'll have to just start there because I'm not sure how else I to get those yeah, figures. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know exactly how it would be done, but I, I'm sure that there's somebody at the town level who would know mm -hmm. how to secure that information. Okay. Mark, you have your hand up? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, when Mindy was at the senior center, the last meeting, she uh, offered to assist us. And I'm just wondering is because we get so few dollars and I'm wondering, I, I like the idea what Jacqueline was saying. Maybe we could ask Mindy somehow mm -hmm. yeah. If, yeah. If, if maybe she could help us figure out how much of the dollars that come in are from the seniors. Where do the dollars go? And what yep. do we get for and where do we get for our money? Yes. <laughs> that, again, yeah. that, that's what well, to ask for. Well, it goes into a slush fund. <laughs> But that, I mean, those are interesting questions. I don't know that you can get a, I don't know. I don't how know you if I can get an exact answer, but I can at least try seeing if the assessor knows how much taxes are collected from older adults. And I can definitely get you formula fund information. Um, we can we can start there and see what, um, you know, see if that leads us to anything else. And, and when, uh... Uh, finding out from the state rep, you know, it how much is allocated uh, on the basis of the demographics that would include seniors or elders, people over 60. Uh, there are some funds in most states, and I don't think uh, Massachusetts is an, an exception. Uh, Christina has her hands up. Yeah. Um, is that something we can ask Mindy Doom to help us with? It's worth, she can say yay or nay. It's worth asking. She has enough political experience and savvy, I would think. I, I think that's, that's an idea. Either her or Joe. It is a. It is you know pretty much at the state level. I, I don't see how how locals could really do that because, you know, for some of the money goes to um, senior housing. I mean, it's spread all over the place. I thought, uh, Jacqueline, you were talking about what worth do the seniors have in the town, which would include things like 
running businesses, um, buying houses, uh, putting gasoline in their car. I didn't think you meant just taxes because there is. I, 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 I will follow up by saying not just taxes. Well, they constitute one way. What are the other ways? Of, hmm, I'm not sure if we could get that kind I wanna, of data because that would rely on like businesses telling us who's shopping there, and I'm not sure that they would, you know, give up um, client information like that. But I think it is reasonable to say, can we find out how much taxes? Because the taxes are what are used for things like funding the library or the capital projects. You know, how much are older adults contributing, and what are what are we spending per senior? I think is a much more you know, the more tangible ask that we could figure out. Would you? Yeah. We're Would talking you? about taxes. <laughs> We're talking about, ta I'm sorry, Mark, uh, but Go ahead, please. I never finished my thought earlier. And that is that, you know, <laughs> there's a formula for everything. And yeah. know how many taxpayers there are. They know how what the population is in, in relationship to how many senators we get, how many legislatures we can have, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it shouldn't be too hard to find out what taxes uh, in Amherst are allocated for specific services, more importantly, our senior services. I'm done. I'm sorry, Mark. You can go no for problem. it. No problem. I was just wondering if Joe Comerford might be able to help us also. Mm, good idea. Might as well get them get them with a team with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe good idea. MCOA as well. You know the MCOA? Yeah. They, they might have that kind of stuff too. They are. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to... I just want to bring us back. What are we what are we asking them for? Or what are we asking Joe and Mindy to do? File legislation for us or identify funding sources? I identify the resources that the presence of seniors or elders in this community generate. And there are some Categories. Identify the resources we generate? Not just by our local taxes, but at the state level, what funds are made available to various locales based on the number of seniors that they have? I don't know. There must be other formula to do that in addition to, but just starting as, as a starting point, that's one. And chances are they will have some ideas as well. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the, the clarity there. Okay, we good on budget for now? Obviously this is a really important issue that we will continue to discuss in, yeah. in yeah. meetings. Um, I Since we did go into the budget, which is under new business, I'm also going to deviate a bit from the agenda because one of the things that I think is really important for us to do as a council in order for us to be really effective and to look to increase our budget and undertake additional things is we need to be... Um, more active. We need to become advocates for the senior yes. center. Yes. Um, we need to raise the visibility of the senior center and council on aging. And um, something I'm gonna ask everybody to do, since you're all on the council, I know you're here because you're committed and you wanna make a difference. And so, um, I'm going to outline a few different things because I totally respect people have time constraints and some people are working. So I'm going to give you flexibility about what you would like to pick, but I am going to ask everybody to commit to something. Um, one is to go to town council meeting 
And at the beginning of the meeting, they have public comment time. And that's when um, whatever it, anybody can get up and speak. And that's a wonderful opportunity for us to remind them about us and our needs and what we're looking to do. So there's two meetings in December. Um, and I would like... Um, I'm sharing my you... screen so that you can see when mm. the meetings are. Yeah, I had looked them up. The 4th and the 18th. I think minimally we should have two people attend the meeting. Um, you can either go in person or you can Zoom in. Um, so those are in the evening, I believe at 630. So that's one option. Another option is to email your town councilors and um, again, make the, and we will send out the elevator pitch and whatnot. So you have good information to, to use in your email, but to remind them of not only remind them, but ask for their support in um, the considering the budget with regards to the senior center, um, some of our other issues in terms of security that have come up. We have a lot of, lot of things that we need the support of the town councilors. So to email a town councilor. And then the third would be to meet with town councilors. Um, and I would say, um, I think one-on-ones are great. I, I think what would make sense is to start with your own town council, whatever district you're in, um, and then um, we can tackle the at-large counselor separately. So those are the th three ways that I feel like um, if we can if we can go to the meetings, if we can email, if we can meet with them, we can really start raising the the visibility of the senior center, particularly on the minds of those that are making the decisions in town. Um, something that we tried, um, we worked on last month and I am embarrassed to say, I don't know where this stands because I'm still trying to figure out how this town operates committee wise, but there's a group of town councilors that set the goals for the town manager for the upcoming year. And um, we, a number of us tried very hard to make sure that the senior center was on that list. I do not know if we made the list or not. Um, several of us, you know, emailed town councilors and met with town councilors, but I don't, um, in the committee that the, I, sorry, I don't remember the name of the like town governance committee or something like that. Okay. They're the ones that set the goals or at least draft the goals. I guess maybe the town council then votes on them, but I don't know where that is at. I don't know if we are a goal or not, but irregardless, if we are awesome, if we aren't, we still have to get cracking on this. So, um, yeah. Mark, Mark has his hand up. Your hand up. Yes, just a quick question. Um, because of the elections, uh, I know we're going to have some new counselors. Mm -hmm. And my question is, um, I know we're going to try to get in front of the town counselors in December. And I'm a big advocate for email and everybody, as you everybody knows by now. Um, and I don't mind meeting uh, with the counselors. <laughs> Uh, but I would need, like your, like, um, like Chad said, the the two minute pitch to yeah. what I should yeah. be talking to them about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would like to know whether or not, because everybody's changing over in January when the new counselors take effect, um, would it behoove us to wait until January to start emailing the new people? It's an excellent question. Um, I, and here's what I would say to that, Mark, to the best of my knowledge, we have some people that are returning to the council. And so it would make sense to me to start focusing on those folks and email them 
And then in January, um, we can certainly reach out and meet with the new counselors. It, just a follow-up, Jean. It's my understanding that if you email the main um, email for the town counselors, they all get the email rather than individually. Because I was emailing everybody individually. And mm. then they told me, well, we get them anyway, because when you send it to the main email, we all get them. So I don't know whether or not that would be a way of getting around, you know, the new old versus new member members. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would double check with um, personally with um, what's her name, Angela, at the town. Um, she works for uh, yeah. the town manager. Yeah. yeah, and I will ask her. And the other one, the other person was um, the town manager. No, no, the town. What do you call it? The town council's chairperson. I think that's what you call the title. Mm -hmm. Le I, is it Lisa? No. Grace Meyer. Thank you. Yes. I will send an email to her to make sure that we could do that and make sure everybody gets what we want. Okay. I have to say, Dennis and I met with some counselors that, um, a while a few months ago and one of the things that they they said we met with two of them and they said we pay attention to our email and so i made note of that i think it's in one of my takeaways is one email to town counselors isn't isn't enough there are groups that are emailing on a regular basis so we need, I, I just want to be clear, and I'm not asking for everybody to, you know, send emails every week or anything. That's not what I'm saying, but um, it it can't be one and done. We go to one meeting, we send one email, okay, we're good. We've got to keep that up. And I think as we um, start doing this, we're going to learn and we're going to figure out, you know, what kind of the next or the logical step would be. I will... Just readily acknowledge all of you, I am not a lobbyist. This is not my forte. So um, I will appreciate if any of you are uncomfortable with um, some of this. What I will offer is I think if anybody is willing to meet with a town counselor, I would be willing to join you. Um, so at least there, there'd be two of us. Um, the other thing I would ask is if you um, choose to email that you are um, CCing myself and Haley um, so that we kind of know who we've reached out to or who we've heard from, um, that we can kind of just keep track of things. And certainly the town council, um, the two December meetings um, very much wanna know if, if you're able to go so that we can um, make sure that we don't have, you know, five people at one and nobody at another. So. Jean, can I uh, interject? I do want to, can oh, I just I'm say sorry. that? I just want to say this because I know it's been a while. Chad and Christina have their hands up. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Okay, sorry. Since she's got it up, everybody's little right now. Actually, you could, can I you? Can you thank you. Yeah, it's easier for me to see. All right. I honestly don't know whose hand was up first. Um, and looks well, like I'm not, you're talking, Chad, I'm but not, I can't. I'm not going to argue with Chad. Chad, if you want to go first, <laughs> go for it. Mine is pretty simple. It's the, just one sentence, a couple of sentences saying, send me the blurb, Jean. I appreciate mm -hmm. everything you said and acknowledge it and feel that we have to continue the momentum. And I'm happy to do that email. If you send me the blurb, I will send it in a consistent way. And as far as going to the meeting in person, that's not going to happen. But if I can go to one meeting on Zoom, I would do that. I noticed there was one on a Saturday. I just don't see the hours. And that's what I need a clarification on the hours. And that's it. My understanding is the town council meetings are Monday evening, the fourth 
for the eight and the 18th. Yeah. And I think do either would you want to pick one of those, Christina? Yes, the 18th is a Monday, you're saying? Yes, both of them are. The fourth well, and all the of them are. All of them. Okay. Let me look at my calendar and then I'll let you know. Um okay. in the meantime, I'm done speaking. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Chad, I think you were next. Yeah, um, I'm usually the contrarian, so I'm going to play that again. Um, I feel a little bit of shame. Um, our last director or the, the one before last would uh, get out the whip and, and, and yell and say, you guys don't care about seniors. You're not going to meetings. You're not advocating for us, et cetera. And it was because we didn't have any information. Uh -huh. You can go there and and just say you know the seniors need help, but I think no, one we thing send our you strategic with plan when we have the strategic plan that says these are the points we need yeah. uh, help from you know the town on or um, if we have this little elevator speech, I think we should have what do you want to call it an outreach committee, a public relations, an advocacy, uh, marketing, whatever you want to call it. And a consolidated effort so that we're coordinated and so that we can really do a good job at, at that. So we certainly we're committed to sending you information so everybody has solid numbers and lots of facts and figures because obviously we want to present well. So having said that, once you have that information, Chad, what what would you be willing to commit to? Would you email? Would you attend? I'm in and out of many of those meetings personally myself. So, you know, um, some of them, um, they'll look across the table and say, is there anybody looking right in my face who has something more to add to the conversation right now? And that's when I would say something. So you're you would be willing so to go for to instance this one percent uh point two three percent that's something that has some teeth that I can mention that will grab people's attention and they'll say oh yeah okay I need to know what the other percents of the other uh, sure. uh, departments yeah. are and that sort of thing but, okay can you do you know your schedule are you able to go on the fourth. No, least. I'm not going to commit to anything until I have the background that I'm talking about. Okay. Can I okay. say I do one? That, I do that I in a general way. Thing, though. I do it in a general way, and I just say, you know, we're one of the six groups that is disenfranchised in this town, and I tell them why that is, and all these general kind of appeals to emotion, but I need to do it more on facts. I'm absolutely. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I I definitely want to say something because I know that there's been. From you, Chad, I've heard a lot about prior directors and what a what a senior center director's role should be on a council. And I would also say that there's an element of personal responsibility. All I did was look at information that's available on the town website and divide the part by the whole and got a percentage. Anybody can do that. You don't need me to tell you that. If you were really interested in knowing, it is available. There's some information that you wouldn't necessarily have access to, and I can certainly provide that. But, you know, I have sat at these meetings for almost two years and said, hey, who wants to come to this event? Who wants to table at this? And if no one does it, it's not on the director anymore. And I'm not going to say anymore, but I think there is an element of personal responsibility for advocacy. Okay. I, I am going to be so bold as to go around the room and ask people what they're willing to do, because um, I think it's really important. We need to we need to do more than just attend meetings once a month. We we need to mm -hmm. raise the bar here. Mark, is that a new hand or is that a old? That's a new hand, but I have a question. And it's in, uh, uh, just to give you an answer, I'm willing to do emails and I, I definitely want to meet with my counselor. I guess it's counselor. And I'm, I believe I'm from Ward 4. 4, because that was one that we're going to have a new counselor. And those are the two things I'd like to do myself personally. And the, re the reason I'm asking is for the emails. Um, I know that the 
senior center is moving away from the, um, what do you call it, uh, newsletter. And we're going to be producing everything online, which would give us a great opportunity to possibly email the seniors and let them know that we want them to help us get a hold of the counselors also. So now it, it won't be just the six of us or eight of us on the screen. It would be if yeah. it's 5,500 yeah. people in the town and let's say even 2,000 get the email, that's a lot more of us saying to the counselor, you know, counsel, help us. Yeah, yeah. It's an excellent point. It can't just be us. We've, we've right. got to do right. this right. and talk this up with our neighbors, our friends, our, you know, folks we're doing, you know, going to the gym with or church, you know, whatever your affiliate groups are, we've, we've got to, we've got to raise the awareness. Um, right. So people recognize you know, what's going on and what we need and how many of us there are. I have to say that was a real um, eye opener for me the first time I heard those numbers. Can I just ask a follow up question very quickly? Haley, do you have any idea um, how many people we might have on our email list as of now? Just a round part? I have to look. I have to look at okay. my spreadsheet. I'm just wondering because it would give us some place to start with and to grow too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. And what um, one thing that I have had Julia create is a form so that when receptionists are on the phone with someone, we have a whole list of questions to ask them to update their contact information for our records. So we're getting new phones, new emails, new addresses as a way to kind of help curate that um, email list. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Hi, Terry. Can I, I, I'm concerned about elders who are not on email and uh, who may not be as proficient at the, in the use of technology and as reliant on uh, technology as we assume they are when we say everything is going online. It's a great ambition for the year 2023, 24, but in terms of reality, I think we have to have a counter plan as well or uh, another plan. And getting that listening, I think we, we would do well, first of all, as, as Chad said, being strategic means we have to outline what we're going to do. Secondly, I think who we are going to target. And thirdly, who will do it so that it's not left up to a volunteer every month. But if we are, if we are strategically organized, then we will have some accountability built in. Yes. And, and the expectation, and we're not just waiting and hoping and wishing that somebody will step to the plate. If we have that subcommittee, like he's saying, at, that will also reach out to the larger committee, that would seem most fitting and proper, especially in a situation like this. Um, I'm not I, I'm, I'm not a lobbyist, but I have done policymaking work with state departments. And it's a matter of having organization um, to what it is we're doing. Yeah. So I, I do want to give some background on the newsletter thing. And it was mentioned in the newsletter, and I mentioned this last month, that for people who need it in print, it will be available at the senior center and they can call and we will still mail it to folks who are having computer problems. We don't want people to feel isolated. So that was front page of the newsletter. Uh, I know I said it last time. I want to also just say that the newsletter cost about $30,000 a year. So there was no financial way that we could continue that given the decrease in donations from the friends group. I'm hopeful that if we were to get more donations that we could at some point maybe resume that service. And I have also talked with the friends about the importance of doing some sporadic postcard mailings to remind people of how to sign up for the newsletter, how to engage with us, invitations for special events. So we will still do some mass mailings, but we just can't afford 
what we have been doing any longer. I'm just going to get to folks we haven't heard from, and then I'll tackle those hands. So, um, Terry, you, I don't know if, I know you joined late. I don't know if you heard all the discussion, but we're trying to obviously raise um, awareness of the senior center in our needs. So I don't know, did you hear the three options? Not really, but I could email. Email, awesome. Awesome, thank you. And Sarah. I'm also willing to email. Email, okay. Wonderful. And Jacqueline, would you be willing to attend a town council meeting either via Zoom or in person? Via Zoom, I would be either attend uh, or um, I, but I have down here three things, attend the, the council meeting, email, meet with your own district counselor. Yep. Is there something else? No. Nope. And I would, those... I would be willing to do either one, the town meeting and or the district, I think is important, very important to meet with the district counselor. Okay. Wonderful. But I'll I'll take on one. I'll take on one and I'll put the other on, on the side as something else that I, I might be willing to do because I have a lot of stuff coming up here. Yep. yep. And and the fourth is not going to be possible for me. Okay. Okay. No, I wanted to present flexible options, because I will appreciate, you know, many of us have lots of things going on in our lives. So, um, but I feel like it's not unreasonable to ask somebody to send an yeah, email. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, I want to be reasonable. And certainly if ever you hear me say something and you don't think it's reasonable, you know, by all means, let me know. Um, Christina, you have your hand up? Yeah, I, 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 looked at my calendar and I'm committed to the attending Zoom on the 18th. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, especially if it's in the evening. That's perfect. Yep. Yep. It definitely is in the evening. Can and I send you a confirmation <laughs> email to both you and Haley stating that I will go on the 18th and I need that script. If you can mm -hmm. reply to it yep. and give me the yep. script, I'd be most thankful. Yep, absolutely. We will send that out to everybody because, um, again, it's really important that we are all, we're consistent in our language, in our numbers. Yes, our yes, pitch, yes. If you will. Not yes. that we all want to say exactly the same thing, but we want to make sure they know that we know what we're talking about. So, yeah, we have to do some homework first. Okay, awesome. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your uh, your assistance with that. Okay, now we're going to go. Um, we're going to go to old business. Um, and I'm going to do the age and dementia friendly action plan review first before we get to the calendar, because this has been sitting on our agenda for multiple months. I don't know if any of you looked at your email today, but I did send out um, the goals that folks had sent me. I appreciate all of you that were able to um, get back to me um, with your, your goals. And I also respect the fact some people, it was um, a challenging assignment that we didn't really um, discuss a whole lot since there were 12 different domains. There was a wide variety. Um, some involved, you know, lots of organizations, town, community folks, different agencies, whereas others were primarily the senior center. Um, the cost of implementing some of these um, varied um, greatly from, you know, investment of staff time to others, more significant major investments, transportation, housing, and certainly new facility. Um, and obviously timeline, um, some we can do quicker than others. So um, something that we were hoping to do is identify 
a short term goal that could be completed um, within maybe like six months. Um, and then a longer term goal that would, you know, maybe take one to two years um, to bring to fruition. So did everybody receive the email I sent out? I have been having snafus, so I have not gotten it uh, yet. Okay. I, I, I'm one of those uh, people who seems to have quite a few challenges with uh, technology. Okay. So, Haley, I don't know if you can share it. Mm -hmm. um, there was <laughs> one... Um, the, the top one here identify and reach out to family caregivers to connect them with support programs and opportunities for meeting with other caregivers of people with dementia. There were, um, it has four stars because it was mentioned by four people. Um, and it was the only one that received kind of that many endorsements, if you will. So that's why it, it's um, sitting at the top there. Um, it seems to me like a, I mean, I would like to offer my endorsement for that one as um, a really important goal, um, I think for us as a community. I think all of us probably know people either within our family or our neighborhood who are um, challenged with dementia and um, the difficulty that the caregivers have in trying to support them. So I think um, I think that's a you great You have a goal. hand up. Um, Jacqueline has her hand up. No, I'm, tr I'm trying to uh, lower my hand, but to oh. say I agree with you. I don't know um, if folks want to um, read through all of them and then offer their endorsement or how would you like to do this, Haley? What do you think would- um, I would definitely be interested in hearing what other people think. I just am reviewing this. Um, you know, there's definitely some things that we can do like right away. Um, Something like shorten the housing, the wait list for senior housing, that would I think yeah. take a, a lot more of a a groundswell kind of, of an approach, but developing intergenerational programming, working with family caregivers. I mean, Mark just sent Mark, does this touch upon what you had emailed to Jean and I? The the very first one listed, identify and reach out to family caregivers. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I meant I meant to send it out to everybody, but I didn't have everybody's oh, email. Okay. So I my apology. Um, they're doing something, and I'm paraphrasing, of course. This is the Am Amherst Neighbors Group. Um, they're working with the Pioneer Valley Memory Care Initiative. Um, and without going into detail, I was just wondering maybe, well, first of all, if we could send this out to everybody in the group. I didn't that you know forward it to everybody. And I was just wondering, maybe they've been doing a lot of work on dementia and some pro they're offering some programs and not just them, but other people who are associating with them. And I'm just wondering, maybe is there a way um, or is it possible what you guys think of working with the Amherst Neighbors and their programs to possibly get some of our goals accomplished also? Hmm. Hmm. I, so, I don't want to look. I don't want to look a a possibility of resource um, and, and push it aside. Um, I, I'm just. I know we're we're two different groups, and I know that we interact sometimes, and sometimes we don't. But this is a very important topic, obviously. Yes. And I think a lot of people might be interested in seeing what they're doing, or at least what they're offering. And maybe, maybe we could, um, is, I don't know if this is kosher 
maybe we could invite you know their spoke person or whatever to possibly be on the next meeting with us oh. and possibly you know get some of their thoughts of maybe how we could work together i i, I agree I, I, I could agree. see utility to that after we got our own stuff together about what we want to do. Uh, I'm still thinking we're not even at a point of whether we're saying we're going to pick one long term and one short term or, um, you know, uh, are we striking a committee to start to begin to work on specific, these specific goals? Uh, I can fill you in on on your question, Mark. There's a there's a national uh, dementia, um, what can you call it, federal bureau that has um, churned out a program that trains through uh, senior centers and different places, a program to help people with dementia. Mm. We have, um, you know, what Haley does at the center. Um, there's this program that goes through many neighbors programs and senior centers. Uh, this one could be a long-term goal, but it says to family caregivers would support programs. So, you know, I don't know if we're talking about the shortage of home health care um, agents or, or personnel or just what 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 is your bite out of the apple going to be? And talk about that before we start working with others, what what do we want to do? And then we can figure out who can help us with that. Do we want to work on a short-term, long-term, what aspect of it? I'm sorry to keep piping in here. I think it does make sense for us to identify our goals first and then kind of look at what resources and potential collaborations would make sense in um, you know, meeting, meeting our goals. Um, Jacqueline, do you have your hand up? Um, yes, I want to make sure that I'm following you correctly. Um, the first one is the one that we're looking at as a priority. And when we say short term and long term, I think the housing piece should also, I don't want to be j jumping um, too quickly here, because uh, this is the Let first just, time I've seen this. Sure. So um, many of you identified goals, um, what you thought should be a goal that we focus on. And so this is a compilation of those. Um, and I listed the first one um, at the top because multiple people had identified that as um, a goal. So I don't know that um, what we had talked about was identifying a short one short-term goal and one long-term goal. Um, so I think we need to narrow this list down. It doesn't mean that we don't want to accomplish everything, but I think we need to be reasonable and in um, so our task tonight is to identify um, a short term and long term goal. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Sure. There might be both in this very one and individual um, item. Uh, I like that idea because the most um, personal motivation for people have come to identify this. Um, I can throw my weight behind any. My concern is that we do it in an organized <laughs> fashion. Um, okay. But the first thing to do might be to make a paragraph out of that sentence. What does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. uh, to define what we're gonna, to define the goal as best we can. Well, I think Number one, I don't think we have time in our meeting to do that. I think once we kind of settle upon which idea, I think we can flesh out more specifically, like how we're going to, what the metrics are and how we're going to measure success with it um, and what the next steps would be. 
But I think first we have to kind of take a step back and and decide kind of topically which which one um, is most important to us. I mean, to so me, I guess number, um, number one also matches with the AARP um, flagship grant that had a specific um, portion of the grant that talked about caregiver services. And Sarah might remember more of the wording than I do, but that could, number one, could potentially be a long-term goal, right? Because it'll take us time to apply for the grant, potentially be awarded the funds, um, which would have to be expended by, I think, next November. Um, but and I think that, that's and, an opportunity. And also part of that grant application was kind of what have you done so far in this area? Mm -hmm. So I think it would feed into the, there's some short-term things we could do around this and the, the grant could be to help with some medium term that would work towards long-term. So it would align very nicely. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody who would be opposed to um, that being a primary goal? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Let me do this and see where it goes. Um, I you, propose sorry, that Dad, we strike you, a committee. Excuse me? What are you? I propose that we strike a committee that takes this sentence and um, sort of massages, massages it into um, a paragraph that we can sink our teeth into um, and, you know, take pieces out of to actually make um, milestones, timelines, budgets, all that kind of stuff. Is that clear? Chad, would you be willing to do this? No, I'm. let's not even talk about that. I'm saying I, I like to make a motion that we strike a committee that looks into this specific goal in um, more than a sentence that defines what this goal is in part and parcel um, so that from there, that committee and this board in its entirety can put on milestones, uh, timelines, uh, you know, budgets, uh, you know. With all due respect, Chad, mm -hmm. we, it's taken us three months to get here. Yep. Um, to identify a goal. And I, I don't think subcommittee is the way to go. Um, I think I did not hear any opposition. So I'm going to move ahead that we're going to use that first one as a goal. It, it certainly seems like it fits very nicely with future plans with regards to grants. And um, I think Haley and I can work together to um, draft some metrics and some ways that we can um, measure success of this as well as kind of logical next steps. So no no discussion on my motion. Well, you'd need a second. If, you, if somebody seconds your motion, you can discuss it. Yeah, but it's being rejected out of hand. I don't see anyone seconding. All right, thank you. I gave it a shot. Okay. All right. Next, we have our calendar. Uh, yes, we have our calendar. I've added a couple of things like Winterfest, and um, um, yeah, here's the MCOA walk challenge that you had said, and then um, I think that was yeah, ARP grant. So I, a couple of things were added. Okay, sorry, you're flipping fast. Can you bring up like November, December so we could just see what where we're at? Okay, all right. So um, the service incentive grant, is that the one that you were mentioning before, Haley? Yes, but we missed the window. So that one, um, not for this year, but definitely for next year, um, we can apply. Okay. Okay. What is that? I, I'm just curious. Oh, sure. Um, the service incentive grant is awarded from the Mass Councils on Aging. Um, usually the two target areas are like outreach and 
family caregiving supports. So um, last year we received an $8,000 grant to do a, a big outreach mailing to people to kind of welcome them to the center and promote our open house. Um, when I was working in Bernardston, we had received the service incentive grant to um, pay for our, our outreach worker um, and some related expenses. So it's a really helpful pot of money. I will say it's probably one of the most competitive grants that MCOA offers. Usually there's a lot of applicants and um, you know only so many are selected. Um, but I think they've they cap it at like eight eight thousand um, dollars per councils on aging, but they offer that grant every year. Mm, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so this looks to be a fairly busy month with holiday programming, festival yes. of lights. Is that that's next? tomorrow? We're, that's we're tomorrow. putting up some lights, trying to brighten the very dark hallways of the Bang Center. <laughs> so if you want to come have hot cocoa with us, I'm putting on a fake log on the fire via YouTube and uh, stringing up some lights just because it's too dark. <laughs> um, and Claws for Cause is going really well. We've gotten um, some really nice donations in from people. Um, I think we have we have about 35 people on the list to receive bags and I'm, I'm going to probably add another 10 or so. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that by participation from other town staff or people in the community. It's been very well received um, and um, definitely looking forward to hearing how volunteers, um, what their experience is once they deliver bags. You've then, received a lot of donations, haven't you? Because I yeah. one point I was in your office and there were just bags full of... Oh, things. yeah, I have to... <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of bags in my office. It's completely changed the landscape of where I can walk. Uh, but it's really nice. And there's been some wonderful items, you know, like beautiful sweaters and puzzle books and all kinds of really fancy hot chocolate and stuff. So it'll be nice when people get those bags. They're going to it'll be special. I, I got a, um, I know, Mark, you have your hand up, but just real quick, I got an email from a woman who we mailed a birthday card to. She was very, um, you know, she said it was so nice to be remembered and how she appreciated it. And so imagine that, but magnified when you when you get a gift around the holidays and you think, oh, this person remembered me. And, you know, it's really nice. Yeah, that's wonderful. Mark? Uh, just a quick question, Haley. Um, the Housing Authority has a lot of seniors. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if any of them are on your list to receive any gifts or you know, mm -hmm. bags. Um, is there a way that we maybe possibly, I could send a, either a flyer to the senior, uh, to the uh, housing authority, they could post it if people want to get a bag or how does that, how would um, you feed? So getting it, it might be difficult this year just because I'm pretty much basing it off of what we have for donations, but I will okay. say some of the folks who live there are on our radar for this first year. It really kind of is someone that we have a connection with in, in some way or another throughout the last two years that I've been there. And I, I know them, but if you or anybody in this group knows of someone, I'd be happy to add them to the list. Um, I'm kind of, I'm banking on the fact that this will grow and word will spread and more people will get connected. So my goal was to do between 50 and 75 <laughs> bags just so that we could have that launch point. But yeah, if you know anyone, I'd be happy to add them. That's great. And remind us again when the when um I would love happening. I would love to have everything in by next Friday, but um we will be making the bags on the 12th, so things could certainly roll in until um the 12th. It's just the drop-in day, nine to three. We're gonna sort all the donations, lay them out and package them up nicely. Um, Julia is doing a card making group with some students from UMass tomorrow, and we're going to put the cards into the bags. So that'd be really nice. I and, uh, uh, volunteered for delivery. When is that? Okay. That starts the week of the 18th. And Haley, have you had an opportunity to go through to see if there's anything in particular that you need? I had a volunteer the other day go through and itemize everything. It's funny to watch somebody catalog like a can of pasta and, you know, teas, but, but she did it all. 
bless her because it took a long time. Um, so I need to just review that. And then I, my plan is next week, get whatever else we might need. Um, okay. I mean, I, for one, am happy to contribute something. I okay. I can send that. Like um, to go with whatever you might need. I mean, if you. Okay. I'll send that out to everyone then just if, if you can. Great. If you can't, that's fine. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Can we uh, jump up to January now? Yes. But we should also say the Merry Maple is tomorrow. So if you're trying to go downtown, be wary of where you park because uh, they do that per the whole parade down Main Street. Yeah. Um, program review and winter fest. Do we have a date for winter fest? Um, I think it's the last week of January into the first week of February. Okay. Something to that effect. Um, Rec, Rec is planning that, but we are going to do a senior dance, like a senior prom, um, as a winter fest event, which will be really fun, and uh, trying to make it intergenerational. Julia is working with um, the program director, Becky from Amherst Rec. And so we're, we're excited to put that together. Awesome. Okay. Program review. Um, that fits nicely. So we do have a um, programming committee. Um, we've met a couple of times. We are compiling. We created an Excel and we have inventoried all the programs that have been offered for the past couple of years at the senior center. Um, and we are filling in our chart. Um, so I don't have a specific chart to share with you today, but rest assured we are hard at work on that. Um, so I think once we have that chart completed, it's going to um, help us better understand what we've been offering at the senior center, areas where you know we, we just have extensive offerings and then potentially other areas that maybe aren't um, is um, areas that we might wanna focus on going forward um, to reach other populations. So I think it's a, certainly a, um, worthwhile task and one where those of us that have been involved with have been learning a lot. So more to come in January with regards to our um, programming group. Um, anybody have any questions about the programming or I should just make mention one of the things that I asked Haley to add to the calendar in May is the um, the walk challenge, which is offered through AARP. Um, they do all basically the work. You just log in, create an account, and they'll ask you to, they have different goals. Um, so you can choose, for example, I participated this year and I chose to walk 30, I committed to walk 30 minutes a day for, I think the time span is 88 days. It begins in May and it runs through the end of October. I foolishly learned about it 89 days before the end. So I was under pressure to walk every day. Um, but be that as it may. Um, my husband also did it. He is more ambitious and he picked one of the mile goals. So I, don't, I couldn't tell you how many miles he walked. A lot of miles, many more than I did. But they have, I don't know, six or eight different goals. This seems like a win-win. AARP yeah. has the website. All we have to do is create our account and we log in, you know, when we've done it and click on the day that we've completed our goal. It tracks it for you. And the more people that are involved, the greater the chances the senior center, they pick a senior center as the beneficiary. So there will be uh, a monetary reward for the, for the senior center that's selected. Um, I view this as a win-win for us. This is a good thing for us to do. We all need to take care of ourselves and walk. Yep. Um, yep. It's it's a win for the senior center. And I think it's a wonderful program where we could engage the entire town. It could be yeah. intergenerational, yeah. getting yeah. kids at schools. We could, um, you know, we can make it really fun. And Amherst can be known as the walking town or I don't know, somebody will come up with some clever logo, but 
I'm I'm excited about it and I hope other people will will be as well. But that's that's what that is in May. So just looks to- good. It sounds good. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um we do not have our um meeting minutes. Um we will tackle that next time, right? Am I right on that? Yeah. Um Dawn couldn't get them in, understandably. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, no topics. Who's doing the minutes for tonight? An excellent question. Ooh. Someone who perhaps would like to go back and watch this and take minutes. Oh, excellent. Is question. Dennis here tonight? No, he's no, um, not he's feeling not. Well. Oh, oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, goodness. I'll do it. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. So sorry. That didn't. Yeah, both of the people who would normally have. Yes. But it does um, lead me to say who would be willing to um, volunteer for January and February? We have been doing a rotation every. Mm-hmm. Well, Dennis isn't here tonight, so maybe he can do December and January. Oh, right, right. Dennis Thank hasn't you, done Dennis. it yet. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Huh? You're right. Dennis has not done it yet. Yes. That's just what we'll so do. So he can do December thinking. and January. Yep. Yep. He's going to be so thrilled to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Are we having, he volunteered, so what are you going to do? I know. Are we having a December meeting? No, we are not. So our next meeting is going to be Thursday, January 11th in 2024. And it's going to be in person. All right. Where do you hold the meetings? The bank center. Okay. Do you do it during the day or? No, same time. Only unless everyone wanted to change the meeting time would we pick a different one. So it would be 6 p.m.? Uh, 5. 5, okay. Mm-hmm. Five On the p.m. second Thursday. Yep, the 11th. Yeah. Just can I throw a caveat in? Everything we've been talking about tonight is wonderful. And I forgot to mention that I just joined the Amherst Media. Oh, congrats. So, and that's my background, which is producing media. So I'm going to be talking to Jean and Haley and maybe Chad, because I think the three of you might be good people on camera. And the reason I'm saying this is because, well, the, <laughs> you're a good spokesperson, Chad. And I think people would identify for some of the things we're trying to do. And it's free advertisement for us. We don't have to pay for it. You do. Um, 25 bucks. Yeah, I already did that, Chad. I'm writing that off. (laughs) But the (laughs) thing is, they did did the opening house last year. And I saw, and they do keep playing it. But it's also available on YouTube. So I talked to Alexa, not Alexa, Mm -hmm. is it Alexa or Alexis? I think it's Alexa, no, Alexa, I'm sorry. Anyway, I spoke with her and she's more than willing to help me so that we can produce some more spots for the senior center and for the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. So I want to throw that out there so everybody could sort of think about things maybe if there's events happening or anything like that we would have to i would i guess i would have to coordinate with her to get you know equipment and that kind of stuff and then of course we'd have to mix it all together but i'm just throwing it out there because i know we're talking about a lot of stuff in the future mm. and i think it because we're talking about getting a hold of the counselors and uh you know getting a hold of the public and that kind of thing. It's just one more free way that we can get our message out. Yeah, so excellent. Just, just throw it awesome. out there. 
Yeah. Thank you, great. Mark. Christina, is your hand up? Yes. Um, I just need for you to repeat the January meeting date in person so I could put it on my calendar. It's Thursday, January 11th. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Sure. Sure. And um, for folks, I appreciate folks may, everybody may not print out the agenda, but it's also listed on our, it's always listed on our meeting agenda when the next meeting is. Um, so we try to make that um, easy for folks, but we'll also send out um, reminders because we will have a little bit of a gap now. Um, we won't have a meeting in December in part because this meeting got pushed back, but also with holidays and whatnot. Um, wanted to give you all a break since you'll be doing plenty of other things in terms of attending town council meetings and writing emails okay. and, and whatnot. Um, but I just want to say I'm very excited about um, the direction we're going and the ideas that people have generated and um, some of the new programs we're going to be tackling and um, the potential for grant money to come in. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you to that, that subcommittee for um, starting to look for some good dollars for us to be able to, to spend. I think that'll be wonderful. Terry? If you can't make the January meeting in person, is there? <laughs> Your microphone Sorry. cut out. Yeah. Will there be options? Yes. I'm I'm guessing what you, I missed the second part. I'm guessing you said if you can't make it in person, is there an option? Is that? Right. Okay. And I, I'm joining her in that. Yeah. Okay. If you can't make it in person, um, we would look to um, have you participate via, probably via FaceTime, um, so that we would, um, depending on, you know, one or two of you, um, we would have on our respective iPads so that you, you could be present for the meeting and obviously, you know, engage in the conversation and whatnot if you weren't able to come in in person. Okay. Some board members have used the telephone for other commissions and committees. Is that no longer possible? The telephone, I mean, we just were talking about using a phone. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like um, Jacqueline, you know, the blank, yeah. Screen, yeah. blank screen. I don't know, yeah. that's what they used in I, the past. I have to say, if possible, I would add, I would, like to see people's face on the screen just because um, these just people were like calling in from faces, Europe. But... These people were calling in from Europe and things like that. They they just oh, couldn't. Yeah. And yeah. they made I mean, the quorum. <laughs> they made the quorum. There is a law that you can do that, but we, we don't want to use that unless we really need to. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would say this if you um if you can't make it in in person want to utilize that to just confirm that with us ahead of time so we can make sure that we've got everything worked out with the technology for you. Okay. The other thing I would just say is um, if anybody is <laughs> uncomfortable and would um, like everybody to wear a mask and or have, you know, open windows or chairs spread apart, um, you know, we're certainly open and amenable. We want to make it a comfortable environment for all. So um, if anybody does have any of those concerns, certainly feel free to be in touch with Haley or myself, and we will certainly work to make sure it's it's comfortable for, for all of you. Terry? When will the minutes or the meeting be on tape so I can listen to it? For tonight um i think surge told me he usually does them on fridays so <coughs> next week it should be up okay great anybody have any final questions or comments okay wish everybody happy holidays 
Oh, yeah, yes. Awesome. yes, absolutely. Yes. Hope you all have a very merry one. Wish you good health and a very happy new year. And um, you'll certainly be hearing from us in the meanwhile with all of these fun fact sheets. And whatnot. yes, yes, yes. And thank you very much for all of that. Motion to adjourn. Somebody second. I, I second. Excellent. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a nice December. Yes. Happy holidays, everybody. Yes. yes. Thank Bye. you so much. Well. Okay. Bye. -bye.